I've been hacked, not now, not today, not recently, but in my first product marketing job, someone in the office clicked on a link for Anna Kornikova pictures and infected our whole entire office network. And when I worked in tech media, I clicked on phishing links in Skype and Twitter DMs, but was somehow lucky enough to realize it almost immediately, fast enough to change my passwords myself before any of the attackers could. And then last year, <clears throat> and then just last year, someone hacked the Instagram account of a childhood friend of mine and was halfway through trying to con me into giving them access to my account before I realized it and just cut the whole thing off. And now that I work at YouTube, I see creators dealing with it across multiple platforms just all the time, which is why I've personally become just super beyond paranoid about online security, even though I've also tried to keep what I do as convenient as possible at the same time, because I just know, I know that otherwise I'll eventually stop doing it. And yes, of course, there's always more the platforms could be doing to protect us as well, from pushing for the adoption of passcodes to more granular access permissions to more intelligence around volume, velocity, and variety triggers. But most of those have complex trade-offs and unclear timelines. So right now for this video, I wanna focus on what I can do, what I do do in case it's useful to some of you as well. And first that starts off with using unique dedicated email addresses for any account that could damage you financially or reputationally. So not for something like an online newspaper subscription, but for banking accounts that protect your money, social media accounts that protect your content, and for creators, the way we make our money, device and storage accounts that protect your potentially sensitive photos, messages, videos, and documents, and avoid logging in with overarching services like Google or Facebook or Apple, because while they're convenient, it just feels like one less login to manage, but if anyone gets that login, they now have access to way more than they otherwise would. So yes, it's a pain, but it denies a bad actor what can be a crucial starting point for attacking and quickly just running rampant through your accounts. Also, use unique, long, strong, pseudo-random passwords for absolutely every account and store them in a login manager app. You can use a built-in password manager like Apple's Keychain, again, for mundane accounts like newspaper subscriptions. But like I explained in this video, if someone manages to grab and get into your device, you don't want them to give access to all your, to get access to all your passwords as well. So secure, generate, autofill, and update those in their own entirely separate app, even if it costs you the price of a couple fancy coffees a month to subscribe to that app. Then set up and use two-factor authentication as well, but use a separate authenticator app or physical security key. You don't wanna rely on SMS for two-factor, not just because you can't get your own codes on a plane, for example, but because it leaves you open to SIM swap attacks where a bad actor calls up your carrier pretends to be you and has your number switched to their phone so they can get your codes. I also prefer to have a separate app for passwords and authentication tokens. Again, just in the off chance that someone shoulder surfs or records me somehow entering my password app, they would have to get access to my authenticator app separately, just one more line of defense. That or get one of those physical keys that you have to put into your USB port and touch to act as an authentication token. Yes, it's one more thing to keep with you, carry with you, potentially lose, but it is that extra level of protection. And yes, avoid security questions at all costs. They're utter garbage because if you're on social, people can probably find out the name of your pet or school or whatever. So if a site you use is terrible enough to demand security questions, fill them with additional passwords that you store in your login manager and then just live with those. Then be careful not to make your accounts so secure you end up locking yourself out. It's not as bad as being hacked, for sure, for sure, but it can cause some of the same problems if you just can't access your money or data or the functions that you need when you're desperately trying, when you desperately need them. And it can take days to unlock because companies will need you to provide all sorts of information and jump through all kinds of hoops to prove that you're really you, that you're the actual account owner and not just a bad actor trying to pervert the account recovery system to hack into the account. 
So set up a recovery contact if you can, print out and safely store recovery keys when you set up two-factor, get a duplicate hard key and keep it somewhere safe, and don't lock away any data that's invaluable to you but worthless to a hacker, like your wedding photos. Only secure what you'd rather risk losing access to than having stolen, not what you'd rather risk having stolen than losing access to. And yes, I know that sounds just all shades of confusing, so I made an entire video on just that one topic as well. And then set reminders to periodically change your passwords. If they're being autofilled, it's not a big deal. Also a reminder to go through all your main platform accounts, Google, Twitter, Facebook, Microsoft, Apple, all of them, and see what other services you've given them access to, and then burn everything you still don't need. Burn it just to watch it burn. Same with any people you've given access to, social media managers, editors, analysts, anybody that doesn't still need that access on an ongoing basis, just purge them. Or if you can't, just reduce the level of anyone's access to the barest possible minimum that you can. That way, if they get hacked and not you, your accounts don't become part of their hack and you can be there for them, helping them, instead of desperately trying to recover yourself as well. And likewise, any old devices that you may have lying around that may be powered down, but still have all of your stuff on them and could fall into the hands of an evil roommate or service person, just wipe them, wipe them now, and you can always restore them later if you find yourself in need of a backup device. Most importantly though, is just don't give out any information you don't absolutely have to, and don't click on any links that you get sent over email or social, not ever if you can help it. Because right now, the most common way accounts are getting hacked is with spear phishing attacks. Someone sends you an amazing offer, maybe to sponsor your content or to award you a prize, and you go back and forth and eventually they send you what looks like a PDF file, but it's really an EXE or an SCR or some other file that you think has critical information on it, but when you click on it, it's really malware. And because they're tricking you, they're trying to make you want to install it, you'll probably blow right past a lot of basic operating system level protections. And once it is installed, it'll just steal the session cookies from your browser. Those are what keep you logged in so you don't have to enter your password over and over again every time you go to your social networks or any website really. And if they get those cookies, especially if they VPN to where it is that you live, they can effectively act as you, all logged in and ready to go. Which is why if you ever get something from a big tech company like Microsoft or Apple or Google or a courier like UPS or FedEx, a phone carrier or a bank, a tax authority, a government entity, me personally, I just never click on it. I open a fresh browser, type in the site name, go to the account section and see if anything is really going on there. And I even know some people who have a higher threat level than me who use separate dedicated Chromebooks or iPads or even older phones with less capable browsers and much higher levels of sandboxing to deal with anything that involves links or attachments just to sort of air gap them from the rest of their network. And yes, I am hardly an InfoSec expert. So I'm sure many of you who are double O black widows are already pinging me with just everything I forgot to mention or just plain got wrong. Good, I wanna learn as much as I can. And just many of you are raging over what I did include as well, I'm sure. But the point is not everyone has to do everything or anything even, we all have to figure out our own threat levels and our willingness to trade convenience for security and then do our best in the face of people who are just doing their absolute worst to make the internet not only way less functional for everybody else, but way less fun. But that's what we have videos for. And right now I'm having a ton of fun doing animations in my YouTube shorts. And for that, I've taken not just a ton of inspiration, but actual education from Evan from Polymatter, thanks to today's sponsor, Skillshare. In Evan's class, he shows you how to make an animated YouTube video. It's intended as an introduction, but like he says, by the end of the class, you could have your first video uploaded to YouTube. Or if animation really isn't your thing, you could try found footage like Penny Lane, who chose to transform existing content, historical content, stock footage, existing videos, into new innovative works, irreverent even, and she's won awards doing just that. Which is my whole entire point. 
It's not just photography, film and video, editing, illustration, but hundreds of career-focused classes all ready and waiting for you all on Skillshare. And that means you can pick or choose just the perfect ones for you, no matter how traditional or eclectic your goals may be. And you can start small, dip your toe in on a single topic, or think big and go all in on the business curriculum of your dreams. And the first 1,000 of you who use the link in the description will get a one month trial of Skillshare for free. Just click the button on the screen or the link in the description and start learning with Skillshare today. Clicking on that button really helps out the channel and so does checking out this video, which explains all the real trade-offs between fail safe and fail secure, between encryption and backups. Give it a watch and I'll see you in the next one.